that's it the pump is fixed the engine is working and we just went with my father to do some shopping we are off from Mallorca heading to Ibiza or Monterra depending on how the wind goes and yeah sailing again So that's it, we're going out of Palma Harbor, we are already in the sail, engine is off and we are off now for about 24 hours, it's 80 miles to uh, Ibiza or Formentera, it's going to depend on the wind, we should have like beam reach for a while and then let's see how the, the wind goes, so yeah, should we just will sail. The weather forecast was wrong, and we got becalmed a lot during the night and the following day. But we ended up reaching the eastern part of Ibiza in the next afternoon. I went spear fishing and I got us two fish for dinner, and we spent the night in a really nice and quiet anchorage. So I just woke up and this is the place where we spend the night, it's really nice, we've been by ourselves. So now I'm just going to maybe have a quick breakfast and we, this is Ibiza by the way. And uh, we're going to run the island on one side or the other, I still don't know, it's going to depend on the wind we find outside. But yeah, it's, it was a really, really nice anchorage, just a nautil over there. But no one is there because that's a good point of traveling in the Medi Mediterranean in November. It's a bit cold, but no one to be found, so it's really cool. Okay, so we just have breakfast and we're going to take the opportunity that there is some wind to um, go and explore a bit the island and of course we're leaving the anchorage sailing, trying to. After a few hours sailing, we would reach a small harbor in the south seas coast of Ibiza. From there, my father would be disembarking to get back to France, and I would carry on the travel single-handed towards Gibraltar.
Okay, so now that I have finally uh, casted off the line from France and also I've been traveling uh, for a little bit now with the boat, uh, I wanted to uh, do a quick recap about numbers and about all the, the refit process. Lots of you have been asking me like how much did it cost, uh, what was the time, etc. So I'll try to, uh, to recap this. So in terms of num numbers, I've uh, started working on the boat in uh, February uh, 2017 and uh, the boat was uh, ready to leave France uh, at the end of October. Um, this is including seven weeks that uh, I've been working as a skipper uh, during the summer. So yeah, I've been working like seven uh, full months on the boat and when I was working on the boat I was really like full time. I was working more than 12 hours a day. So it was really uh, hard work. So in terms of budget, I've invested roughly 13,000 uh, euro into the boat. So it was about 1,000 euro for the inboard engine. It was second hand. Um, about 4,000 uh, for electronics and uh, electricity, uh, solar panel, autopilot, etc. So that's the, the biggest cost. Um, also 4,000 of uh, raw material, including epoxy paint, uh, epoxy, fiberglass, stainless steel and all these different uh, equipments. There was about 2000 euro of transporting the boat, cranes, shipyard fees, all these together. From the moment I took the boat in the forest, yeah, it uh, cost me about 2000. The, re the replacement of the rigging, uh, all the cables, stainless steel, uh, this is another 1000. And um, I managed to uh, recover a bit more than 1,500 uh, euro uh, selling parts and material uh, that it, I did not need it anymore. So that's also something that uh, I've been equalizing a bit uh, this budget. So maybe a couple of uh, lessons learned also about the refit and uh, all this process that I went through. So about time. I was expecting for the refit to be long, but it was longer than this. Uh, people normally say, uh, take the time you think it's going to take and multiply it by three and you'll have the time of refit of your boat. It's appro approximately this, uh, because on an old boat like this, as soon as you remove something, then you discover something that you need to fix. So it's a, it's a really long process. So about the budget, I exceeded my original budget of 25% uh, approximately. Um, this is something that you have to plan, it's really hard to plan it, but uh, don't go cheap, it's important to have good material, you work better with good material, and if you make smart cho choices and plan in advance by online, it, uh, it really helps also. So yeah, another thing is do things yourself. Honestly, um, I asked to some professional and to some uh, workshops to do some uh, stuff and I was really disappointed by their service. Uh, in French we say, on n'est jamais mieux servi que par soi-même. And it's really true, uh, honestly, just um, for these particular things and for the rest, just go online, read, go on YouTube, uh, watch, try things and just do them yourself, it will be uh, a lot better. Another thing is provisioning. It's really time consuming. Go and buy the epoxy, the paint, uh, going to buy a new uh, brush or a new uh, or some tape that you need. It's really time consuming, so that's one of the, the really major uh, hurdles. But it's some, really something that you need to plan uh, way in advance. Working on your own boat is uh, really the best. It gives you a great knowledge about your boat. You know the weaknesses, you know the strengths and when you're in strong weather, uh, so I had strong weather in uh, on the way from uh, France to Baleares and uh, now I'm a bit more advanced in the trip. I had like really big seas and when you know your boat, you're much more confident into, into what it can uh, achieve. So if you have the opportunity uh, to get your boat into your garden or into the field or anywhere for the refit, do it. Uh, I mean, it's less distraction and uh, time loss than on a shipyard. You can organize yourself more uh, like you want. It's uh, cheaper also. So yeah, that was a good thing about the refit I did. 
about equipment and tools this is uh, super important you will work uh, faster and have a better uh, finish quality if you if you have good tools what I did I bought uh, some uh, sanding machine and different uh, grinding equipment electrical equipment that is a bit expensive but if you treat the material well if you clean them regularly um, you manage to uh, sell them after actually all the, the electrical material uh, I bought I managed to uh, sell them for 50 to 70 percent of the value I, I bought them and also Ecume de Mer so it's the model of uh, my boat is a great boat if there is one around you and you have a, a project of sailing and you're looking for a small affordable boat Ecume de Mer is the one. It's been three months now that I'm traveling uh, with the boat and there is not one arbor when, where uh, someone did not stop and say me, oh, that's an Ecume de Mer, it's a good boat. So it's really reliable boat. I got like uh, Beaufort 7 to 8 weather for several days um, and the boat just does the work it's uh, really safe on the water um, and for any other question that you might have about refit I'm always uh, happy to to help and to give advices so just you know reach out to me comment or private message me and, and also something I wanted to point out is uh, the music in my videos I'm using uh, lots of music from some friends of mine one is uh, Quentin Buffier and his group uh, LOLIA this really nice uh, you know Spanish um, guitar rhythms that uh, you hear and also big thanks to uh, the anatomy of Frank uh, they've been uh, also give me giving me some music and uh, you should check out the, the website they're, they're really really good and, and they have nice music out there so thank you guys for the music and for the rest of you go uh, and check this uh, online